This video will show you how to install and use Heimdall Data. You can get the download from HeimdallData.com. Once you get the zip file, you can uncompress the zip file and you will see a directory called Heimdall Demo with the driver jar and the server jar in it. For a simple start, run runme.bat on Windows or runme.sh on Linux or Mac and you will see a few screens pop up. What these screens are doing is starting up the Heimdall server, generating some traffic, and then it'll direct you to the dashboard. So what we have right now is with the test database, we can see the queries being executed, the average time, the connections, and other information. So this is an example of using Heimdall data visibility feature. Now let's go through and see how this sources are actually configured. The first thing we have is we have a driver that is currently set up. Our test database is MySQL. Here's our connection information for our JDBC class and our standard JDBC URL. You can also have Heimdall data manage the MySQL jar. So if you want Heimdall to manage it rather than install it on your user application, you can upload that particular file and then Heimdall will download it automatically on the client machine. A data source is very similar to what you would see in other JDBC programs. So here we've configured a data source for our MySQL. We've given it a name, dbdemo.mysql. Here is its URL and its user ID and password. Creating a new source like this is as simple as clicking on create new source, giving it a name, specifying the driver, and then specifying the URL, and then click commit. I won't keep this source, so I'm going to delete it right now. The last step is defining a virtual database. In the demonstration, the name of the virtual database is dbdemo, and that shows up in the URL. So the URL you use from the client perspective is JDBC Heimdall localhost 8087 dbdemo. dbdemo is the name of our virtual database, localhost 8087 is the location of the Heimdall server. So if you're running it on the local machine, that will be its address. That URL will change depending on where you are running Heimdall. The JDBC driver class, this is what's provided when you're defining your JDBC connection in your user application, in your web server, wherever you're using Heimdall. The data source I've already selected is dbdemo.mysql. And then I have a list of rules, dbdemos.rules. So if I go back to the dashboard, I can still see our queries running with our traffic. We take a look, you should see one of your screens with this traffic being generated, which is what you see on the Heimdall data dashboard. Now one useful feature of Heimdall is now you can perform some analytics. We'll select our virtual database, we'll ask for anal analyze that information, and what Heimdall will do is go through the logs and figure out what the most common queries are. This will be really helpful because you can now use those to recommend things to cache. So if you're not sure where you can get performance optimizations, you can do that by doing analytics and then caching some of the queries. So if I take a look here, these top three queries are very common and I'm gonna pick this one right here because I know that this is a very uh, expensive SQL query to execute. So by clicking on the cache button, what that's going to do is take me to the rules tab. The rules tab already has two rules set up by default. One is to trace, to give us more information on the performance of the queries, and another one is to log, which will log anything besides a select, anything that doesn't generate a result set. By clicking the cache button, I have a new regex rule specifying what the query format looks like that I want to cache. I can say commit, and now that will be added as a rule of something that I potentially could cache. So once again, to do some an analytics, select your virtual database, click Analyze. It may take some time, depending how many queries you had generated. Select the rule that you want to cache, click Cache, and then click Commit. 